hey guys a very good uh, morning i hope you're all doing well and uh, you're keeping yourself safe at home and uh, yeah i know that it's been a while and uh, we're looking forward that uh, everything is going to be okay and um, we can get back to normal so i uh, hope to see you guys soon yeah and uh, so today in uh, the lecture we'll have a discussion about facebook and uh, articulators i know it's a very difficult topic and it's difficult to understand by uh, just a presentation but uh, i would also share uh, a video on uh, how to do a facebook transfer and uh, the use of a semi adjustable articulator probably i would like to share something on a hana wide view articulator which is the most commonly used and uh, you can just uh, get back to me in case you have more doubts yeah and uh, by the end of the lecture so i want you all to uh, know what is the importance of a facebow so what's a facebow the basic parts then articulators and uh, the parts of the articulator and uh, what are semi adjustable articulators the uses and how do we do programming yeah so uh, looking at what is a facebow right facebow is by definition is a caliper like device that is used to record the relationship of the jaws to the opening axis of the jaw that is your maxilla and your mandible opening axis of your mandible mandible and to orient the cast in the same relationship to the opening of uh, axis of the articulator so your articulator is the one which simulates the temporomandibular joint so by the use of a facebow you are trying to record the spatial arrangement or the movement of your condyle in the glenoid fossa and you are transferring the same relationship to that of your articulator and and moreover i would say that um, the relationship of how your mandible is moving in relation to the maxilla or the skull base or the cranium so this uh, relation if you are able to transfer it to the semi adjustable articulator you will more or less be able to simulate a, a movement that is similar to that of your patient for the successful delivery of a good processes yeah so uh, how do you orient the mandible so orienting the mandible in such a way so that it is in the most posterior position and also in that glenoid fossa the mandible can rotate in a sagittal plane around an imaginary transverse axis if you remember in my lecture in occlusion in rpd i was discussing that if you uh, Im imagine the condyle of the mandible and draw a straight line passing through the center of the condyle so that is your transverse axis or the hinge axis so that is passing through or near the condyle so this is the orientation relation that you are transferring from the patient to that of your articulator so by establishing the same occlusal plane which is in the patient right now to the articulator you are trying to simulate the uh uh the uh, existing occlusal plane which helps in a balance between the musculature and also the processes that you are going to so what does this occlusal plane help you in anteriorly you are looking at achieving aesthetics and as well as for uh, phonetics because you know that your teeth arrangement will not only change the appearance of the patient but also helps in improving the phonetics right you will be uh, coming across uh, a simple topic which you will have to look at that is what are the different uh, sounds uh, bilabial sounds bilingual sounds palatal sounds lingual sounds labial sounds all of the consonants vowels then articulators okay so all of these things are taken into consideration so your trial stage is just not about your occlusion but you're also looking mainly at aesthetics and phonetics and coming to your posterior part so in your posterior part you need to know that your occlusal plane is forming a milling surface so that is where your tongue and the buccinator muscle that is you would have heard about buccinator mechanism in your uh, orthodontics right so the buccinator mechanism they help in placing the food bolus on the occlusal surfaces of the tooth and hence help in the mastication so any 
uh, incorrect occlusal plane or any changes in the occlusal plane would hamper the aesthetics, phonetics and mastication. It may affect stability of complete denture and ultimately it will also affect the alveolar bone resorption. We need to know that your bone, uh, the residual ridge that is underlying the processes is the foundation for the processes. So any adverse uh, changes that might affect the bone will lead to continuous resorption and thus affecting the stability of your denture as well. So in your orientation, the plane of the maxilla, you need to understand that it is tilted in some of the patients. It is not the same in all the patients. So the plane of occlusion, it's mainly an essential part wherein you're going to establish a balanced occlusion. So the position of the occlusion plane in your denture wearer will be as it should the uh, plane should be as close as possible as that of the patient so that 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 is the plane that is occupied by the natural teeth so that there is a balance between the occlusion plane that you're providing uh, leading to normal function of the tongue and the cheek muscles and thus you're also helping in enhancing the denture stability so it, if, if you uh, are establishing a good occlusal plane, you need to know that once your teeth are oriented in, an, in a plane that is in harmony with the uh, stomatognathic system, then your denture will be fully retentive and also stable. So if you are doubtful or if you have seen in your complete denture patients that there is an instability of your denture, of your lower denture so then you might have to see that there will be any kind of premature contacts and that has to be so in your orientation relation you are establishing a relationship between the maxillary arch and the horizontal plane it and the same relation is transferred to the articulator and then it provides an accurate mounting of the maxillary cast to the articulator and hence the relation of the mandible to the maxilla also is more accurate yeah so looking at the parts of the face bow so if you look at the parts of the face bow first is your orbital pointer and then you can see the u-shaped frame and then this is your locking clamp once you have placed the u-shaped frame and these um, uh, the ear plugs into the patient's ears and once you see that the orbital pointer is also coinciding with the third point of reference that is the inferior uh, margin of your or orbit you will use this locking clamp to tighten it and thus establish that this is the uh, occlusal plane of the patient and here you can also see that there is a bite fork and these are your condylar rods. So there are basically two types of face bow that is your arbitrary face bow and also kinematic face bow. In your arbitrary face bow you have a fascia type, you have earpiece type, then you have Hanau face bow, spring bow, uh, splymatic dinar, twirl bow and whip mix. So if you look at this image you can see that uh, this is a ear bow. So the condylar rods are placed in the external auditory meatus that is a earpiece type of a face bow and if you look at this this is more of a fascia type of face bow uh, hana articulator you can see that right in front of your external auditory meatus where there is an uh, imaginary hinge axis uh, that is uh, imagine that that is uh, assumed by the clinician a, a, a gra graphic tracing uh, plate is placed in front of the external auditory meatus and the the facial landmarks are used to record the face bow transfer and then coming to your arbitrary face bow so what and in uh, your arbitrary face bow what you do is you make use of some approximate points on the face and also some posterior reference points and the condylar rods are placed on these positions so uh, it need not necessarily be uh, very accurate like that of your uh, ear bow wherein your ear bow you are able to place the um, ear piece, ear plugs straight into the external auditory meatus. So arbitrary face bows are just sufficient enough for fabrication of complete dentures, uh, fixed partial dentures and also removable partial denture. So small error in location while trying to uh, establish your hinge axis will have only a negligible effect at your 
occlusal le uh, level. So also uh, you need to know that the resiliency or there's something called as uh, a real life effect on the oral tissues which uh, make the exact transfer and uh, location of the hinge axis that is unnecessary. So there is always a contemplation between great scientists whether as to uh, as to whether the phase 4 transfer is required for the fabrication of a confidential processes or it is not required uh, 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 because you need to know that uh, in a completely edentulous patient the soft tissue that is uh, present on the residual ridge which is the foundation for your denture is a movable tissue it has uh, an amount of resiliency that makes the tissue compressible and movable so some part of your uh, fabrication where uh, maybe it can be during your uh, primary impression stage or your secondary impression stage the tissues are definitely um, uh, they are susceptible to uh, changes like uh, compressibility so this might also hamper the success of the processes so that is why there is still a debate as to whether a phase bow has to be used or it so in the phase bow type and the earpiece type there are some differences that i want i want you all to look at so uh, the phase uh, in the fascia type in the earpiece the phase bow is converted to the fascia bow simply by just removing the earplugs and if you look at this image you can see that the earplugs have been removed uh, from uh, and instead of placing these condylar rods in the external auditory meatus you are just imagining a hinge axis right in front of your external auditory meatus that is in the condylar area and you're placing it much anteriorly so you by utilizing the posterior reference point and the skin over the temporomandibular joint region uh, we just place these condylar rods in the uh, in just in front of the external auditory meatus uh, whereas in your earpiece type, yes, you are using the external auditory meatus, which has a fixed relationship to that of your uh, hinge axis. So here, just assume that this is your hinge axis and here's your uh, external auditory meatus. So the distance between this external auditory meatus and the hinge axis is always fixed and that is uh, compensated in the uh, semi-adjustable articulator, which I will be showing uh, it to you in a demonstration. So each earpiece it will have a central hole that connects to the auditory pin on the articulator. Yes, and once you uh, tra transfer the face bow to the articulator, these uh, earpieces are just uh, seated on the auditory pin on the articulator. So it does not require any measurements or markings. Unlike the fascia type, you don't have to mark the arbitrary hinge axis. And also definitely the accuracy is as similar as that of the RV methods. And then looking at the kinematic face bow. So kinematic face bow is mainly used to locate and transfer the true hinge axis. It's a very complex instrument. As you look at the image itself, um, it and it requires a lot of chair side time. You see that there is a graphic plate that is being attached uh, as, uh, in front of the external auditory meatus. So and this bite fork that is placed in the patient mouth and this stylus are connected. So as and when the patient makes the different kinds of movements, the hinge axis or uh, the movements of the mandible are recorded on this graphic plate and hence in this graphic plate you will try to uh, um, uh, uh, find out or locate which is the true hinge axis. Okay and to just summarize what the face bow is, yes definitely if you are not using a face bow and you are just blindly orienting uh, the jaw relation on your articulator, it will definitely lead to small errors. So the elimination of these errors uh, can be produced uh, uh, by failure to not use a face bow where indicated. So uh, when, whenever it is required for complex cases like uh, semi, uh, like uh, cast partial denture or uh, full mouth cases or even fixed partial dentures, a face bow is definitely indicated. And uh, it and also even though it is a complex procedure, it might uh, require uh, uh, manual skills to be able to transfer the face bow record. It definitely justifies the time that is taken to record the face bow. Uh, face bow. And then we look at articulators. So in articulators, you need to know, as you look at this image, I can uh, uh, I can show you that your articulator is just simulating 
or it is a mechanical instrument that represents the temporomandibular joint uh, and the jaws to which the maxillary and the mandibular cast may be attached to simulate the same movements or to, to simulate some or all of the mandibular movements. So, so it depends on the kind of articulator that you are using. If you are using a simple articulator, then uh, you will be able to simulate only the open and closed mechanisms. But if you are using a complex articulator like a virtual articulator or if you are using a semi-adjustable articulator, then you are transferring all the different kinds of movements to articulator yeah so what are the purposes of uh, using an articulator one is for your diagnostic purpose so once you have made a primary impression you, you can do a diagnostic mounting analyze what is the occlusion what is the uh, kind of a uh, situation that you see in the patient mouth because uh, the amount of time that you will be taking to uh, analyze each tooth in the arch uh, might not be uh, a good idea to make the patient sit and keep his mouth open for a long time. So you would rather do a temporary or a diagnostic mounting on your articulator and uh, have a look at the articulator in, in detail and come up with a uh, treatment plan. So, so you're planning dental procedures, what has to be done and also it helps in the fabrication of your temporary denture bases which you can be using for uh, uh, the processes or, or like uh, for the fabrication of your processes or appliances and then uh, you, can, uh, you can correct or modify the restorations also that have already been done. Then you can also show the diagnostic mounting to the patient and educate the patient what has to be done and uh, what is the need for the treatment and also for arrangement of artificial teeth. So what are the minimum requirements of an uh, articulator? It should open and close in a hinge-like fashion. It should hold the cast in the correct the horizontal and the vertical relationship. It should also simulate protrusive and lateral jaw motions. The moving path should be accurately missioned and move freely and accurately. So uh, they, uh, that, that you will be able to see in a semi-adjustable articulator. And the non-moving parts which are fixed should be more rigid in construction. And also your semi-adjustable, art, like your, like your semi-adjustable articulator, it should be able to accept the face bow transfer. So this rules out that you cannot afford to use a mean value articulator for uh, your procedures. What are the additional requirements for an uh, articulator? So you must be able to adjust the horizontal and the lateral guide elements, then have condylar elements as a part of the lower frame and uh, condylar guides as a part of the upper frame. Then uh, the, uh, the ability of the articulator be uh, to uh, receive a face bow transfer then a terminal hinge axis uh, position lock then you should have removable mounting plates so that you will be able to use the articulator for different cases at the same time and uh, use an adjust uh, and also have an adjustable incisal guide table that is when you're doing your fixed partial uh, processes if you have an incisal guide table you will be able to uh, construct the anterior teeth so when you are doing uh, anterior restorations something like uh, uh, a three unit or a five unit or a six unit anterior bridge you are trying to establish the incisal guidance so in these cases you definitely need an um, incisal guide table and you should be able to uh, fabricate a adjustable incisal guide table uh, with the existing semi-adjustable articulator and also adjustable intercondylar width of the condylar elements. Please note that you need to understand that an articulator even a semi-adjustable articulator is made up of a certain uh, arbitrary or fixed values which have been determined as an average after conducting many studies. So a semi-adjustable articulator definitely need not be a perfect articulator but it can more or less simulate to an extent what are the different kind of uh, movements a person can uh, be uh, doing while using uh, a processes or before uh, constructing of the processes. So what are the advantages of your articulators? It helps you for better visualization. Then uh, chair side and your patient appointment is also reduced. Then your patient cooperation is not required to study the cast. Then yes, saliva, tongue and cheek uh, are hindrances and uh, those also can be eliminated. And pre effect. As mentioned earlier, the compressibility or the 
position of the the uh, the move the moving uh, part of your uh, uh, soft tissues is not a hindrance for you in your articulator and uh, not only uh, that but uh, uh, more procedures can also be delegated or given to your technicians so uh, and what are the limitations since it is a mechanical instrument it is subject to more errors and um, it is uh, and it is also uh, subject to wear it can fatigue it can simulate it can simulate only some movements but it cannot completely duplicate all the job movements so based on the classification uh, that is given uh, uh, in the University of uh, Michigan, that is the International Prosthodontic Workshop, the articulators are classified as class 1, class 2, class 3 and class 4 and in each class of 2, 3 and 4 you have type A, type B, type C and uh, in 3 and 4 you have type A and type B. So, uh, looking at the basic articulators, so this is your simple hinge articulator. It is the simplest of all the articulators. It is a simple holding device. I think uh, uh, in your lab visit, you would have seen that most of the technicians are the ones who use a simple um, uh, hinge articulator to just um, uh, ensure that the maxilla is occluding with that of the mandible. And in this articulator, you can only see that it is capable of opening and closing movements and a simple static occlusion um, cannot be recommended because I have already mentioned in my earlier class that occlusion is not a static relationship but it is more of a uh, it's more of a dynamic so next coming to your mean value articulator I know this is your favorite articulator and you guys would have been very well versed with this um, articulator uh, since your second year of your uh, uh, dental program so in this some amount of lateral and protrusive movements in addition to your hinge uh, moment, uh, hinge articulator uh, can be observed and also these movements are ba based on the fixed average uh, value that is the intercondylar distance which is around 110 uh, uh, mm and uh, the dentures will always provide you a static centric occlusion so it is not giving you a dynamic occlusion so correction of all the lateral and protrusive interferences cannot be done much on this articulator they can be done only to a certain extent so the complete removal of the interferences in the centric and eccentric positions can be corrected only in the patient mouth if you are using a mean value articulator and it cannot be done completely on the articulator. So you need to know that your uh, uh, cast, your maxillary cast and your mandibular cast, they are mounted on the semi-adjustable uh, on the mean value articulator based on the average, as I mentioned, the intercondylar distance, that 110 millimeters. But whereas in your semi-adjustable articulator, uh, if you see, it has a lot more features when compared to that of your uh, um, your hinge articulator and your mean value articulator. It has an adjustable condylar and incisal guide. Uh, then it accepts a face bow. And basically, there are two types of uh, semi-adjustable articulators. That is the archon type and the non-archon type. So in your archon, the, the term archon is coined by Bergstrom. So so if you split this word archon, R symbol, uh, symbolizes articulator and con is the condyle. So this term indicates an instrument that has its condylar element on the lower member of the articulator and the condylar guides in the upper member. So please note that, that the condylar element is on the lower member. That is, so your lower member is uh, the mandible and the condyle is present on the lower member and the condylar guides are present in the upper member that is uh, uh, that is which I will show it to you in the image so uh, these are condylar articulators these articulators help in better visualization and also understanding of the mandibular so yeah if you look at uh, uh, non archon it is the opposite of the uh, opposite of that of the archon it's so in your previous slide i was saying that the condyle uh, is present on the lower member but over here the condylar element as you see uh, look at the arrow that the condylar element is present on the upper member and the condylar guide table is uh, attached to that of the 
lower member. So uh, examples for this is your Hanau H2 series and your Bipmix articulator. For your Archon type of articulator, it is Dinar and uh, Wide View, which is most commonly so as you see here, you can make out the difference in this image. So the Archon and the non-Archon. So Archon, the condyla elements are on the lower member and the moving. So this replicates your condyle, which is moving on the glenoid fossa, that is of your upper member. Uh, in uh, And it's the same that is replicated in your Archon articulators. Whereas in your non-Archon articulators, as you saw in the Hanau H2 series, this yellow color uh, ball which replicates the condyle is present on the lower member. And this is articulating with that of the glenoid fossa which is present on the upper. Yes. And now we will look at Hanau Wide View Articulator. Uh, I am looking forward that I will be able to explain to you in detail uh, by demonstration when we get back to college. And for an overview, you can have a look at the articulator right now. So uh, this is your upper member. Uh, you can see that there is a condyler guidance that is attached to the upper member. And the condyle is attached to the lower member. This is your lower arm. And then you have two mounting plates. You can also see the anterior, the third point of reference or the orbital pointer. This has to be coincided with that of the facebow transfer. So when you're doing a facebow transfer, you can see that there is an auditory pin over here uh, in the lower arm to which the facebow is attached. And the third point of reference on the U-shaped frame of the facebow is coincided with that of the orbital pointer that is present on the upper member of your uh, Hanau articulator and also you see that there is an incisal guide uh, pin which has a blunt end and a sharp end so if you are doing a, a customized guide table for a fixed partial denture you would use this blunt end and when you're doing your complete dentures you are you going to use the flat end and then you can see the incisal guide table, which is also having certain markings over here, which can be adjusted. Okay, in a close up, you can see, yes, the upper arm, it has the uh, mounting plate and also the, the incisal um, pin is attached to the upper member. You can also see that the uh, orbital indicator is attached to the upper member. Okay, when you are looking at your lower arm, uh, I have already shown there is an auditory pin and the, there is also a condyler analog. So that round uh, spherical uh, structure that you see, which is attached to the lower member is replicating your condyle uh, of the mandible. So uh, the lower arm is more or less like a L shape or a horizontal arm and also a vertical arm. And uh, yes, you also have again a mounting ring and also the incisal guide table is attached to that of your lower arm. So what are the mounting plates used for? These mounting plates, they connect the cast to the articulator and uh, they can also be detached from the articulator. And then uh, coming to condylar analog. Yes, the condylar analog, which is attached to the lower member, uh, it represents the condyle. And usually it is spherical in shape and it is attached to the lower arm. So condylar guidance. As you can see in this image, you can see that there are markings on the condylar guidance. If the condylar guidance is attached to the upper arm. And in that condylar guidance, there is a small track, a U-shaped track. So that movement of the condyle also is fixed in this articulator, which, me, which, which is uh, pointing out uh, towards the restricted movement of the condyle in a semi-adjustable articulator. So you need to understand that this articulator uh, is just simulating certain movements of the uh, mandible in the maxilla of the patient, but not duplicating the entire movement. So it guide this condylar guide track, it helps or it guides the movement of the condyle during protrusive and lateral movements. So while when you take a protrusive record, uh, uh, protrusive interocclusion record uh, from the patient, the condylar values, these values can be adjusted and some amount of movements can be duplicated in your uh, articulator. 
and next looking at the incisal guide pin so it represents the vertical dimension of occlusion so the advantage of using a semi adjustable articulator is that in certain cases uh, in our google classroom if you guys remember that i have already posted uh, one article uh, on uh, severe attrition uh, which requires a full mouth approach. So in your severe attrition, uh, and I'm sure uh, I, uh, you guys would have looked at uh, Turner and uh, Miscellin's uh, uh, classification about severely worn dentition. So in a severely worn out dentition, when there is a uh, uh, attrition that is also associated with collapse of vertical dimension, there is a need for re-establishing the vertical dimension re-establishing the vd so that in those cases when you are using an incisal guide pin you can adjust the occlusion or the vertical dimension by increasing the vd so this guide pin it rests on the incisal table and it can move along it uh, along its surface it can be either either you can try to raise the vertical or you can try to lower the vertical then coming to your incisal guide table then incisal guide table it represents the lingual slopes of your maxillary anterior teeth so why do you need to move your incisal guide table so if you uh, as i'm teaching you if you try to notice when you are speaking uh, or when you are trying to glide your lower anteriors and trying uh, try to bring them into an end on end position just give it a try just slightly move your lower uh, anterior teeth and try to bring an edge to edge position of your upper anterior teeth and your lower anterior teeth. So what do you notice? So when you are trying to glide it, the incisal surfaces of your uh, lower teeth are gliding over the palatal or the lingual slopes of the maxillary anterior teeth and then they are coming in contact with the incisal edges. So this movement if you are able to simulate in your processes, you are establishing the anterior guidance which is correlated with the mandibular movement and that helps in giving you a successful processes without any kind of hindrances when the patient is going to uh, speak or uh, move his or, or protrude his uh, jaw in, uh, uh, in, 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 in the uh, anterior and posterior movements. So basically, you have uh, two components in your incisal guide uh, table. That is your anteroposterior common component, as I explained earlier, and also a lateral component. So the palatal slopes of the maxillary canines. And if you are giving a, a mutually protected occlusion or a canine guided occlusion, if you're trying to re-establish the, uh, the uh, occlusion that was existing in the patient you need to check for the uh, inclines of the canines whether they are coming in contact with lower teeth so that's about your uh, semi adjustable articulator then we're looking at fully adjustable articulators so uh, in your fully adjustable articulator yes you will be able to follow all the mandibular movements in all directions and the condyla pathway and the incisal guidance can be customized for each patient by selectively uh, uh, check uh, making a mold with the help of an acrylic resin um, which also I will be uh, showing it to you in a demonstration and uh, yes if you are using a fully adjustable articulator the purpose is that for gnathological studies and for extensive occlusal rehabilitation uh, then uh, in, in temporomandibular joint uh, disorder cases where you will have to correct the existing occlusion then if you are doing a occlusal uh, full mouth case wherein all the teeth have to be restored uh, with crowns so these uh, so these are the uh, situations you will have to use a fully adjustable articulator and examples for your fully adjustable articulator is a stewart articulator and dinar d5a is a fully adjustable articulator so uh, here are the pictures of uh, your Stuart articulator and your Dinar uh, D5 articulator. Uh, I'm sure looking at the image itself, it looks quite complicated. Uh, as uh, clinicians, we ourselves find it very uh, complicated. And um, then uh, programming the articulator. So when you are going to uh, program your articulator, there are many things that you have to take, in, uh, take into consideration. So uh, the first thing will be that uh, you will have to first do uh, accurate Facebook record. Okay. 
and uh, uh, after the faceboard record has been transferred you will mount the upper cast and you will have to uh, uh, once the mounting has been completed you with the help of an inter occlusal record you are also going to place a bite uh, a bite a wax bite or uh, you might be using an inter occlusal record which is made up of silicon material or you might also use aloe wax uh, you will uh, uh, try to correlate the intercuspal position maximum intercuspal position of the maxillary cast with that of the mandibular cast and you try to uh, mount the lower cast as well so once the uh, upper uh, maxillary cast and the mandibular cast have been mounted individually to that of the articulator and you close the articulator just like your hinge articulator it will have a maximum intercuspation position so now now how do you program this particular articulator to your patient's uh, temporomandibular joint movements. So for this, you need to do an interocclusion record. In this, what you do is there's something called as anterior programming device. You try to verify and see what is the bite of the patient. You guide the patient to bite in a centric relation position. So please notice that a centric relation position and centric occlusion position is different from your MIP that is your maximum intercuspation position. So once you know that you are able to guide the patient into his proper centric relation position at that moment what we do is we take individual uh, right and left lateral inter occlusion records with the help of silicon materials we inject silicon materials on the occlusal surface of the posterior teeth uh, on either sides and you ask the patient to first bite in centric and move his jaw completely to the right and completely to the left so when the uh, when the patient is moving his jaw to the right and to the left what happens is when the material is still in that moldable stage the movement of the uh, upper uh, buccal and palatal cusps over the material on the lower teeth helps in making the material to move to the right and the left lateral and so the the material sets in such a way that these movements are duplicated on those interocclusal record materials so once the material has been set the same materials the same uh, records are transferred to that of the uh, lower member or the lower cast on your articulator and the articulator is closed and uh, you notice that you, I already in your articulator image I have shown you uh, that uh, there is an inside uh, sorry the condyler uh, guide and also condyler element so you leave loose the con condyler uh, guide and also the condyler element and with, with the help of your upper member or the incisal pin when you try to move it to the uh, uh, the extreme on the right and extreme onto the left whichever is the uh, uh, like uh, whichever is uh, where, wherever the uh, uh, upper member cannot be moved for, further that is where you tighten the the condyler guide and the value that you obtain over there is your condyler guidance that that, that is the same that is replicated on the uh, left lateral side also and hence your uh, uh, articulator is programmed according to how the patient has moved while taking the interocclusion record i hope there is some amount of clarity and uh, if you have still not understand uh, understood uh, how it is done i hope uh, the video which we are going to share will be helpful for you all and um, you will be able to see how it is done and definitely yes once we get back we'll be able to show you how it is okay so uh, yes uh, as mentioned earlier methods of programming the articulator i have already explained to you using a protrusive interocclusal uh, record and uh, yeah you can see in this image so first the incisal pin is raised and once the uh, cast will articulate then the incisal pin will again be uh, lowered and the degree of inclination when the 
upper caste is moving to the right or to the left extremes this inclination is marked on this condylar guide track when the condyle the condyle on the lower uh, element will be move, moving and once it is done then these lock nuts that are present on the condylar guide track will be tightened and will be secured so i was and using the interocclusal records i've already explained to you and uh, the same to you in your video and yes i hope that uh, it is clear for you and uh, so the use of a semi adjustable articulator for the construction of your uh, full mouth cases or in kind uh, or in different temporomandibular joint uh, disorder cases must be definitely Uh, looked at and uh, i hope that uh, uh, i was able to deliver some uh, some important points to you in this lecture and i'm looking forward to share the video as well on uh, facebook and uh, articulators uh, uh, in your uh, google classroom i encourage all of you all to go through the videos that we are sharing and also to be active in um, the class thank you so much have a good day